So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for this important talk. This is part two. We've been covering for Seventh-day Adventists, as well as others that want to listen in, these four aspects of the Church, prophecy, family life, the Gospel, and the health message. And right now we're covering the Gospel in a very deep way, because we're taking a look at how it is necessary that you have your right brain healed to successfully understand the Gospel and demonstrate it in your actions. So, that is something that comes from having these maturity skills worked out. The infant stage, pause if you need to. The child stage. The adult stage. And if you want to keep going in your maturity, which I highly recommend. The parent stage. And the elder stage. This is very essential. So, that happens when your right brain is healed through relationships with people not just through Bible study. I made a point in the last video, you can spend four hours a day in Scripture, six hours a day in Scripture. I don't care how many hours. If you haven't been willing to emotionally mature, your ability to comprehend Scripture and everything else you read will be severely impaired. What I was saying over here is these people who aren't of God's fold, but who have the fruits due to emotional maturity, are people we need to respect. Other sheep I have, not will have. Other sheep I have right now. Let's take a look at this quickly. Well, that's okay, God's saying. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. But into which church? Into a church that judges them based upon what they eat, or how they dress, or whether they smoke or not, you know. This is something else which is quite major, you know. The health message of our church I may get more into this later, but the health message needs to be shared as far as how, according to Ellen White, this is going to blow you away. There were some speakers that checked into Ellen White's statements about health. 80% were about how your spiritual and emotional health affects your physical health. 20% were about the eight doctors, the natural health laws. So I'm going to speak very straight to you as the Seventh-day Adventist. If you focus more on the eight health laws and the eight doctors, what you eat, exercise, all of these, more than on your emotional health, in order to maintain your physical health, you are deceived. Forgiveness, a joyful state of mind, good connections to your family, according to Ellen White, make up 80% of your physical health. I tell you, it is better to be happy and in forgiveness eating meat for your physical health than it is to have worry, care, and anxiety about the future where you anticipate with deep terrors resulting in cortisol running through your brain and your body, injurious to both, fear of the time of trouble, when you expect God will abandon you, although I tell you he will not. And here's why. I'm going to really get into this. Let's, gonna, let's hit this with as they say, maximum force. Because this is something which is very, very, very essential. I'm going to look this up on my phone here because until I learn how to pause these recordings, this isn't going to work. So here we go. This is a statement in Great Controversy. Let's take a look. You need to hear this. This is something that I never saw before until God showed it to me. So we're going to look here. When God, when probation closes, what does it say about when God pulls back from the righteous? Except that he doesn't, but people misinterpret it. Let me see if I can find it right here, in this physical book. This is highly, highly essential.
Here it is. This is Great Controversy, page 614. When he leaves the sanctuary, darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. In that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. The restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed, and Satan has entire control of the finally impenitent. So, what he was doing was he was interceding for the wicked. He isn't interceding for the righteous anymore. Their cases have been decided. It has been decided that they are saved. But the intercession where God's spirit strives with the wicked has been removed, and now Satan has full control of them. God's long-suffering has ended. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his law, and trampled upon his law. I'm sorry. The world has despised his mercy. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his love, and trampled upon his law. The wicked have passed the boundary of their probation. The Spirit of God, persistently resisted, has at last been withdrawn. Unsheltered by divine grace, they have no protection from the wicked one. So basically, God removes his spirit from the wicked because they don't want it. But he doesn't from the righteous. In fact, Ellen White says he sends more angels to guard the righteous. So, based upon as well, the Bible text that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, God will not abandon you in the time of trouble. He will always be there for you. Because having overcome your lies about God the Father's character, you now will feel comfortable relating directly to God the Father without Christ in between. That is what frightens most people, because most of us have had fathers who were high in authority and low in attachment. And we project onto God the Father those same traits. But I tell you, that is not the case. God the Father loves us with an unfailing love, and we should pray earnestly for God to give us a correct view of the character of God the Father and of God the Son. And if you believe that there are three members in the Godhead of God the Holy Spirit also, our view of their character must be healed. Absolutely. There is no way around this. For if your character is not healed, you won't be able to see God clearly. And this is why these levels of the brain are so important. It is hard to see God with a better character than you yourself have. So when your right brain is healed, you're going to have more success in this venture. And when you see the true character of God, trusting him will be easy. Sin will lose its attraction because the word says, when the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. And that means free from the pull of sin, free to enjoy life. Free to, in this world, have your loves and desires remade into what Jesus would want you to have. Free to have an experience where you don't have to resist evil. Because Christ is your defense, Ellen White says. You'll be as attracted to Jesus and to righteousness as God himself. If you have to force yourself against your desires to do what you believe God requires of you, you have a problem. First, your beliefs about what God requires could be off. And secondly, your beliefs about the need to force yourself could be off because that is salvation by works. That's salvation by willpower, not Christianity. And it still doesn't fix the issue of how do you change your character? How do you be changed so your attraction for sin goes away and your desire for Jesus and his way comes in until it is, is easy for you to live righteously as it is for a hungry child to eat. If you're not at that point, then your Christianity has not gone deep enough. You only have behavior management, but you don't have sanctification. My brothers, my sisters, this is very, very important. So the health message. Let's type this in. 80% 80% psychological. 20% physical, 
physical, according to the writings of Ellen White. I'm not merely saying that 80% of health is about the health of your mind and 20% the health of your body. I'm saying 80% of your physical health comes from your state of mind and 20% of your physical health comes from what you eat, exercise, all this. This ratio, these numbers, are compiled by experienced people, Adventist speakers who studied Ellen White thoroughly and came up with this. So, forgiving people, being happy, emotionally maturing, this emotional maturity is not just to make you happier, it will also improve your physical health because just look at these different stages. If you're not living in joy, you'll have more cortisol. If you don't trust, you'll be lonely, more cortisol. If you can't receive, you'll miss out on blessings, fun experiences in life, more cortisol. Number four, if you haven't fully organized yourself into a person through relationships, your relationships will be chaotic, your emotions will be random, more cortisol. Number five, if you haven't learned how to get back to joy from every negative emotion, which is shame, hopeless despair, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness, within 90 seconds, which you're supposed to learn ideally by age three, you're going to have uncontrolled emotions. What are you going to have? More cortisol. Look up the effect of cortisol upon the brain and the body. It's not good. Remember the gut-brain connection? Negative thoughts affect your gut's ability to digest food. They can have even more effect upon injuring your gut than the glyphosate, which pokes holes in your intestinal lining, which is in non-organic food. If you want to eat healthfully, just eat organic fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables, and you'll be in a good place. At least at this point, organic includes non-GMO, which means if it says non-GMO, it may not be organic. But if it says organic, it will be non-GMO. It's pretty simple. Enjoy a hot and cold shower every day. Exercise, hopefully, with people who like you. Um, get enough sleep. Your trust in God will improve based upon getting through these maturity tasks. Um, you won't have issues with overeating if you learn how to return to joy from every unpleasant emotion. Some people who are stuck in shame, anger, or fear, they overeat to deal with it. They have an addiction to food, and unlike with drugs, because you need food, getting over an addiction to something that you have to keep doing is tougher than going cold turkey. Otherwise, you just go cold turkey on food, but in two weeks, you may be in a position where you can't bless your family and friends anymore. In other words, dead. So, I recommend that you keep eating, even if you feel that your life is not worth much. Jesus says, I will give men for your life, people for your life here. So remember how much value you have. People for your life. Okay. I think it's not people, it is men. This is important for you to remember at the times when you feel low in your life. Okay. Men life. There it is. Isaiah 43, 4. Let's go there right now. I love the Bible, in case you haven't noticed by now. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4. Says the following. It says, Since thou wast precious in my sight, Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Now this applies to you, these texts, Isaiah 43, verses 4 through 7. Even 
if you're guilty of those five, quote, serious sins I've mentioned, pedophilia, homosexuality, bestiality, murder, drug addiction, let me add pride, because pride is pretty severe too. Pride can keep out of the kingdom, and unlike the others, pride is less obvious. If you've done one of those five things besides pride, you know if you're guilty. You may feel really badly, but I tell you, God can rescue you even from those sins, as well as from pride. He can rescue you even from those sins. And here you can see God's attitude towards you, though you're in deep sin, though the physical effects of your sins, of which I just listed, are still on your body. Since you were precious in God's sight, you've been honorable. He sees you according to who you are, which is a righteous child of God, not according to your condition, which is a sinner, tending towards sin, the condition of being guilty of many sins. And I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. I had an experience where I had somebody who I was close to pass away. And it was a situation where I thought, I wonder if God allowed them to pass away instead of me. That sounds prideful, but let me explain a bit of what I mean, because in each video, as I get to know my audience better, I get more real and more deep, so make sure that you watch these in order, because believe me, if you watch this video without having heard the ones before, it could be kind of intense for you. But uh, sometimes I believe we make severe mistakes, which I have done, and the devil says, hey, I have the right to take them out. And God says, hey, I want them to live. I need them. And the devil says, give me somebody. Give me someone else I can take out who's in the area. And that's what I suspect sometimes happens. Somebody who is listening to this may be able to vouch for the fact that this theory is correct. God allows someone else to pass away to placate the devil instead of you. Think about that. It may not be true. But uh, something to mull over, especially in the minds of somebody who successfully passed the infant stage, pause if you need to, the child stage, and the adult stage, if you've not passed these stages, your ability to comprehend and process deep theology will be impaired. Not might be, will be. And that is why maturity is the pill of great price, which you should focus on if you have not before. It's essential. As it says here, when people with adult bodies are functioning below the adult level of maturity, you will know because in the end your interactions with them will never feel mutual. You'll go away feeling like in order to maintain a relationship with them. You'll always need to give more, listen more, or tolerate more than they would ever be willing to do for you. So, this applies not just between people, but between us individually and God and the Church corporately and God. We're called to grow up, to be the Bride of Christ. We are the Bride of Christ, but our functional level is not that. Do we corporately think of Jesus' needs as much as he thinks of ours? I don't think so. Um, in my next talk, I'll be getting into a discussion on a very important subject, and that subject is hierarchy versus family. Don't miss it. Because if your mind wasn't blown by this point in that lecture, it will be. So let's take a look here. This is your encouragement that even though you're guilty of many sins, God is working to rescue you. He cares about you. You are not forgotten. You are not lost. Fear not, for I am with thee. I'll bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. So remember that God is always with you. Remember that no matter what you've done, even those six severe sins I just listed, God is working to save you and to bring you to a place where you were not at before. So, I feel impressed to make this a shorter talk, 
I hope this is a blessing to many. Thank you very much, and God bless.